Raphael, one of the most well-known painters during the time of the High Renaissance era, as well as was admired for his form and composition, achieving a sense of visual appearance. Often called the Prince of the Painters, Raphael was one of the most famous painters during the time of the High Renaissance era. Younger of the two artists, Leonardo and Michelangelo, Raphael used the idea of perfectionism in his work through paintings or murals. Known for many religious murals emulating the teachings of Christ, which he symbolized through Jesus as well as Virgin Mary, he therefore then took on the task of working inside of the Sistine chapels for some time due to his religious beliefs wanting to be shared. Some of his most known works, as well as the ones we will dive deeper into today, include the School of Athens, the Deposition, the Sistine Madonna, and his very own self-portrait. Raphael's work is shown to be one of the best styles presented in Rome and Italy, as well as in society today. As presented in the picture, the School of Athens is a mural that represents philosophers basically doing philosophy. This mural is located in the Stanza Dea Signatura as one of the four walls representing philosophy. He incorporated a technique called fresco, which is essentially a technique that uses water-based paint and paints it onto a plaster, creating that mural-like texture. As we take a look deeper into the painting, we can depict two figures presented in the middle. This is shown to be Plato and Aristotle, which were both giant philosophers during the time. These artists shared opposing philosophies, creating a contrast on each side, basically splitting the painting down the middle. Color is also a huge factor in these philosophers' apparel. We see on the left, which is represented to be Plato, wearing the colors red and purple, which represented air and fire. And this correlated to his teachings of theoretical and ethereal thinking. We then see on the right, Aristotle wearing opposing colors, which are blue and yellow which consisted of earth and water, showing his teachings of actualistic thinking. As we zoom out of those two figures, we see the opposing sides continue. On Plato's side, we see people holding drawings and books that have info about theoretical data. And on the opposite side where Aristotle is, we see more measurements and practical equations emphasizing his realistic ideas. As we move more into the background of where they're at, we see two sculptures shown to be Apollo and Athena. On the left side, we see Apollo, the sun god, where he's symbolizing the platonic symbolization. And on the imposing side, we see Athena, goddess of war and wisdom, who advocates for practical affairs for all men, therefore furthering the two philosophers' ideas. Going back to the figures, we see some space presented in front of Aristotle and Plato. This is shown to symbolize improvement and new advances presented in art's future. This can also represent Raphael and his new ideas in art and him emphasizing that he is going to become more and more popular in art. As we see in the picture, the deposition is symbolizing Jesus' death after his crucifixion, which is basically him dying on the cross for us to forgive our sins. Um, many of the figures shown besides Jesus and Virgin Mary are holding a sad face, which creates a sorrowful tone towards the painting due to Jesus' death. Um, we see v Virgin Mary on the very far right, which who was Jesus' mother, and she is shown to be fainted, and the women are trying to help her get upright so she can come back. We can kind of see in the background there are three crosses presented in the upper right corner. They're shown to be very small, but we can easily depict they're shown to be three crosses. These correlate to the crucifixion, which is shown in the Bible, where Jesus was nailed to a cross and died for us, forgiving our sins. Um, we see also a sort of light and dark color contrast shown between the cross side and the storm getting ready to come, as well as between the figures in the front. And this is shown to represent life and death with Jesus in the world. As represented on the left side, we see the painting called the Sistine Madonna. This is basically a painting that depicted the vision of appearing to saints in the clouds. 
This symbolized through the child that Christ was being born as they represent the child shown to be Jesus. Um, this was shown to be a very religious painting during the time as Christ being born is a very big theme presented in the Bible and it represents him bringing good into the rest of the world. We see very clearly a main figure presented in the middle. Um, this woman's holding the baby and is depicted to be Virgin Mary, which is shown to be Jesus's mother. Mary holding the child is a symbolization of Jesus's birth into the world and his impact religiously on the rest of the world. Um, the lighter color tones represent life and a time of celebration for his birth, as this was a very important time in the Bible. We can easily depict that there are two figures presented on either side of Mary. They are shown to be the Greek Christian saints. The one on the left is shown to be St. Sixtus, and the one on the right is shown to be St. Barbara. St. Sixtus, who is on the left, is shown to be looking up at Christ, honoring his birth. And on the left, we see St. Barbara, who is gazing downward as if she is looking down at the path of Madonna, inspecting the scene. And it looks almost as if she is seeing how bright the child's future will be and therefore shadowing his life throughout the Bible. We also see at the bottom there are two figures we can kind of depict to be two angels sitting down. Um, they are shown to be at a strange placement angle as many angels are represented at the top of the sky and many paintings emphasizing their religious significance almost. Um, their gaze is also shown to be off to the right of the child as if they are focused on something else. And therefore, these angels represent a conflicting side to religion and um, place like a heaven-like scheme to Christ being born. Lastly, we dive into Raphael's most recognizable depiction of himself, which is shown to be his self-portrait. Uh, we see the dark amber background as well as the dark colored hair and garments, which highlight his features on his face, showing no expression and being almost sort of toned down in a sense. Um, we also can look at his garments as they represent the prime fashion during the time of the High Renaissance era which was shown to be more darker color palettes and shirts with collars, lace and frills, and headpieces. And this shows him being in a higher class and also shows his more artistic apparel. Overall, Raphael's paintings were very intriguing to me as he holds many religious beliefs and symbolizes a bunch of characters behind the meanings of the Bible, which I thought were very intriguing. He also shows a lot of detail and emphasizes a lot of meanings behind his paintings. Um, the High Renaissance era was a time where art was very meaningful and religious, and I think he clearly depicts that in almost every painting that I talked about today, as well as other paintings he has created. These four paintings are very meaningful, especially the School of Athens, as it is one of the most famous paintings in the world today. But many of his paintings, as shown, were very religious and showed deep meaning into his work and his beliefs.